a killer is on the loose. It's become an all too common sight on LA streets. Meth addicts. We're seeing surveillance camera images of some of Bob Lee's final moments. Lee told friends that the city was deteriorating into a cesspool. This system is going to be overthrown, and it's going to mean a lot of white people risking a lot of things. Breaking news in downtown LA where three people were found dead from possible drug overdoses. From stuff happening out in the open. I think that what's happening is a complete and utter disgrace. That's what's happening. I don't understand how people that don't even pay taxes have more. Fear the city. Petri dish of social sickness. Breeding ground of unrest. California apocalypse. What's going on in the two largest cities in the most populous and prosperous state in America, San Francisco and LA. And in fact, these are two of the most, if not the two most influential to American and global society cities in the world, because LA is the entertainment capital and entertainment has become one of our new gods. And the San Francisco is Silicon Valley, the technology capital and of course, Computers and technology have become our other new god. You can basically do anything with uh, synthetic uh, RNA, DNA. It's, really, it's like a computer program. So, I mean, I think with enough with effort, that's not too crazy. You could probably stop aging, reverse it if you want. You could turn someone into a freaking butterfly if you want with the right DNA sequence. Why are these cities falling apart right before our eyes? Some say it's the crazy politics. Some say it's the meth. This is about the only major county I could find where there's as many or more meth overdose deaths as opioids. Just last year, fentanyl finally caught up to meth. They both had 1,526 ODs in LA County last year. That's a lot. I mean, in the peak of the 1980s Yayo era, you'd have about five or 6,000 OD deaths in the US total. I say it's the narcissism, and today's story is going to take us on a tricky, winding path for you to follow along that starts with the stabbing death of Cash App founder and Silicon Valley guide Bob Lee. We're seeing surveillance camera images of some of Bob Lee's final moments. Lee told friends that the city was deteriorating into a cesspool. But I know this neighborhood has been going backward. At this point, a killer is on the loose. As soon as he was found stabbed in an area not far from where there's been a lot of homeless people attacking people in San Francisco, people uh, most notably Elon Musk jumped on social media to blame it on the San Francisco mayor that quote, Violent crime in San Francisco is horrific, and even if attackers are caught, they often are released immediately. And implicitly on law enforcement in San Francisco and the no cash bail, the decriminalization of hard drugs and Proposition 48, which passed in California some years ago. Under Prop 47, there will be little to no jail time for anyone found possessing drugs such as methamphetamine or cocaine. Possession of drugs for use is just a misdemeanor. And any shoplifting, forgery, or fraud under $950 is now considered a misdemeanor. Even though they uh, got mud on their face when it came out that in fact it was another crazy tech person who stabbed uh, Bob Lee to death. It was another tech guy whose sister was cheating on her husband with Bob Lee. 38 year old Nima Momini now behind bars for the stabbing death of tech exec and founder of Cash App, Bob Lee. Police say the two men knew each other and got into an argument shortly before. The but I say the technology people are just as dangerous as the politicians. What to do about the fentanyl epidemic? Tell me what we need to do just as dangerous as the so-called street people. In fact, the so-called street people, you see them and they may bother you and it's a problem, but that ain't what's going to make civilization fall. But the, the most dangerous people are those that are smart and have a narrative of why their ideas and their understanding should be imposed. Those are the dangerous ones. I'm worth more money than you, and I have more influence than you and have, you know, Pierce Morgan from a different country saying, well, the uh, I'm not going to do an English accent because that would be racist. Clean and sober is one of the biggest damn mistakes this country's ever made. Uh, we all need to self-medicate periodically. The dope fiends, the street level criminals, the poor people are not, in fact, the biggest problem. The tech people and the billionaires are who you should fear. Let's go back to the late 60s and early 70s when there was a tremendous amount of civil unrest 
and we're going to connect that time to the outcry from technology people about Bob Lee and saying San Francisco has become unsafe. But one of the main targets of vitriol for all this, his birth goes all the way back, his literal birth, to the last time we had a lot of civil unrest and the last time when the cities cleared out because remember people left in the 70s that's why they were able to be revitalized recently there was nothing in a lot of downtowns except poor people to be moved away like so much debris he goes back to the tumultuous bay area and new york politics of the radical uh, movement that used violence to try to affect political change I don't know, but it's just people are running all over the place. All right, can you hold on? Yeah. I'm going to need an ambulance. Somebody just, yeah, he just yelled out, I need an ambulance. Shit. What if I told you that this white woman and white man were both convicted of murdering a black man in cold blood? What if I told you that their son, this baby, used the fact that he was the child of, quote, incarcerated parents to get support amongst minority voters when he ran for office in a big city. My parents drove a getaway car in a tragic armed robbery that left three men dead. My mother ended up serving 22 years in prison. My father's still incarcerated today and will likely never get out. What if I told you that both of these white murderers of the black man in cold blood were Jewish? Maybe you should join the Hebrew Israelites, huh? Don't celebrate the white man's holiday! Maybe Kanye West was right, huh? But hold up, swole up. There's more. What if I told you that the crimes they committed had been planned and orchestrated by a black man, in fact, the guy that gave the most beloved rapper of all time his last name, Shakur. But Tulu Shakur, in fact, who just got released from prison in December for orchestrating the 1981 Brinks truck robbery that led to multiple dead. A security guard was murdered in cold blood and two policemen were killed in the chase and shootout that followed. And this white couple was convicted of being a part of that. They were convicted of murder. So take a closer look at this baby and imagine the year is 1981. His mother dumps him with a babysitter so she can hop in a Utah truck with their husband and they can go sit in a parking lot. Echoes of the violent radical underground of the 1960s rolled over the New York suburb of Nanuet today. Wait for members of the BLA, the Black Liberation Army, while they shoot and kill several Brinks truck drivers and steal the equivalent in today's money of almost $5 million, which was planned to be used somehow to help the formation of the old dream of the Republic of New Africa. What is there about the American dream that has ever been realized by black people? What could we ever hope for within the framework of, of, of a society which is dominated by white people? This Republic of New Africa proposed an all-black homeland in the former Confederate states in this Brinks robbery in 1981. The $5 million they got was to be used towards that, to taking the 13 states or how many states was it? Whatever the number of states of the old Confederacy, turning it into an all-black homeland. The lead defendant, Sekou Odinge, didn't try to refute the charges against him, but rather described himself as a freedom fighter who'd become a prisoner of war. How killing a black police officer to steal money from a bank translates into Georgia being all-black, homeland in its own country. You really would have to be mentally ill, schizophrenic, to see the connection. And that's the connection that a lot of these politically active people nowadays have. Yee! I'm the head of the Mossad! I'm gonna kill you and take your children away from you! With these people on the street going through meth psychosis, it's schizophrenia. Where are you from, Muggles? I'm from Jolly Old England in Cubano, the Galactic Federation of Cuba. How'd you get here? How'd you get here? They think the things that don't connect and make sense together actually form a strict logical causal chain when in fact they do not. Now just to go into the crime of this baby's parents a little bit and this is the part where you may come to really despise them as human beings. It's one thing to get caught up in revolution but this white couple sat in the U-Haul. The three black robbers under Mutulu Shakur's direction had already killed the Brinks driver, took the money. They pull up in the parking lot 
and they get in a U-Haul truck that the white couple is driving because they know they're going to get pulled over. And if the three robber killers were black and it's a nice white couple driving a U-Haul, they figured the pigs wouldn't question them. But when they got pulled over, the pigs did want to know who they were and they started questioning them. And according to the conviction, though, the baby's mother disputes it to this time, but probably she talked to cops as a young white woman into putting their guns down. And as soon as they did, three guys, part of the Black Liberation Army, had already killed. The Brinks truck drivers jumped out and shot the cops, including killing the one black police officer who had been the first black police officer in Nyack, New York history, a guy who made a check on Friday, supported his family, and worked. Unlike people who rob banks and have narcissistic disorder. I don't like revolutionaries. Now, the woman in the case, she got 22 years. She was paroled in 2003 and was later, and not without controversy, appointed an adjunct professor at Columbia University in 2013. The husband, the father of the baby, he got 75 years. He didn't get out till October of 2021. 76-year-old David Gilbert will be released from a correctional facility in upstate New York next month. Gilbert was serving 75 years to life for his role in the armored truck robbery. And his own parents' treatment by the criminal justice system, the fact that his mother and father committed the same crime, but because his mother had a father who was a lawyer and knew some prominent people. We had a long personal discussion, and we are going to defend her as well as we can in court. And she took a plea, and his father didn't, or led for the same crime to vastly different outcomes. Like I said, his mother got out in 03, his father didn't get out till 2021. Now, who did this baby grow up to be? Well, he's Chessa Boudin. He uh, was the lightning rod San Francisco DA, recently voted out of office. He's the guy that people like Elon Musk and others that have fled San Francisco have blamed it. Are dead. The suspected driver here is a serial offender who is out on parole. And the parole office made a statement which provided you all the details needed to revoke bail, but yet you chose to do. And people like his predecessor, George Cass, going down in uh, LA County, these are the so called liberals at the, at the cutting edge of criminal justice, social reform. These are the people trying to implement no cash bail, uh, the people who actually sit and have meetings with the defund the police people. On this term that we've heard a lot in the last few months, defund the police. And, you know, it's a movement that's taken off. I think it started a critical conversation about the ways in which our country has responded to some of our most complex challenges and how we've used police as a one-size-fits-all frontline response no matter whether we're dealing with an armed robbery in progress or someone having a mental health breakdown. Now since his parents were incarcerated, this little baby, he grew up in Chicago, the Hyde Park neighborhood. Well that's where Obama Barack Obama and his, and his wife Michelle lived prior to him running for president and I think they maintain a home there now. And he grew up in the home of Bill Ayers. If you guys are into politics, you may remember when Obama ran, that was one of the things that was used against him. You had the radical black pastor. And then wants us to sing God bless America. No, no, no. Not God bless America. God damn America. Uh, and also Bill Ayers, the white College professor. Bill Ayers founded the terrorist group known as the Weather Underground. Years later, Obama worked with him in two nonprofit organizations, but insists they were never close. He had been in the Weather Underground with Chesa Boudin's parents. The Weather Underground was formed on the campus of my alma mater, the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, 1970. A radical left-wing group that took its name from the Bob Dylan lyric. You don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows with the express purpose of being like a violent, armed, white wing, like to ally with the Black Panthers and others. This system is gonna be overthrown. It's gonna mean a fight. And it's gonna mean a lot of white people risking a lot of things. And the violent overthrow of the US status quo social regime. Um, <laughs> they infamously blew themselves up 
in Greenwich Village, killing, or they were trying to make bombs. They, they, they mismanufactured them. One went off. Several of them were killed. Uh, Chesa Boudin's mother, I think, was one of the survivors, and she went on to uh, be involved in the crime that Matulu Shakur of the Black Liberation Army orchestrated. Now, the Weather Underground was very active in the 1970s. They were blowing stuff up. They attacked Washington, D.C. I go in depth in the story in my documentary, American Dope Acid Dreams. They were hired by the Brotherhood of Eternal Love, California bikers turned LSD kingpins, probably the biggest manufacturers of LSDs ever. They were paid by them. The weather underground was to break Timothy Leary. Don't politic, don't vote. These are old men's games. Impotent and senile old men that want to put you onto their uh, old chess games of war and power. Harvard professor turned LSD and drug proponent, Mr. Tune in, turn in, drop out, to break him out of California prison, which they successfully did. He fled the country for time and he ended up in Algeria under the umbrella of Eldridge Cleaver, who the president put in charge of all the Western radicals and dissidents that had fled to his country. There were so many plane hijackers, drug dealers, murderous hippies, that he took the former Minister of Information of the Black Panthers, Eldridge Cleaver, author of Soul on Ice, a guy who by his own admission, R.A. P.E.'d women, that's why I went to prison, he put all the crazy Americans and Westerners under Eldridge Cleaver's watch. And I have some interesting footage of Cleaver and Leary debating the role of drug use in revolution. Eldridge Cleaver is not with it. These people who were walking around uh, seeking uh, freedom and liberation through drugs, uh, I think they are delusionary the allies that they're not really helping us. Which I agree, I think. The idea that using drugs for enlightenment is unrevolutionary. It's very upper income, very comfortable status quo idea. I'm gonna change the world by getting high. What? So I've mentioned quite a few things. Let's stay focused. What does uh, Cash App, former CTO Bob Lee's stabbing death have to do with all this? Well, of course, as soon as it happened, Musk tweeted, crime in San Francisco is horrible. San Francisco and LA, I'm moving out of downtown LA right now. I put in my 30 days. Downtown LA felt like, oh, I've arrived. I live in an expensive neighborhood where there's nice things to do. It was, it was dope. I really liked it. Never recovered. It's not the same. God is in the midst of LA is not the same, and generally, I don't think the big cities are the same. Elon Musk and the tech people in San Francisco are upset. They feel like they revitalized San Francisco, and now it's been let go. But remember, we were born into something that was going on before us. All that the tech people definitely did is made gentrification happen and home prices go up. Is that bad? Is that good? It's very important. I get every phone. iPhone 8, iPhone 7, iPhone 6, all of them. <laughs> tech money did a lot of stuff in San Francisco. One of their top tech people was stabbed to death by another tech person. If you didn't know, this crime, crime in San Francisco is horrific, and this is because no cash bail, and it had nothing to do with that. And I didn't think it did. That's why I waited to do a story. Another tech guy who had a married sister she was messing with Bob Lee somehow. Bob Lee and this lunatic get into an argument. This guy sounds mentally ill. You bring a butcher knife to talk in a car about who your sister, your grown sister, is having an affair with and you stab him to death. Well, many who runs his own tech company making his first court appearance Friday. He's seen in these sketches signaling a heart symbol with his hands to his family. His sister, Kazar, now at the center of the case, who prosecutors say was a friend of Lee. So mental illness runs across all social spectrums, all income levels, and this proves it. I mean, this guy stabbed him to death about an affair with his sister. Sounds like a crazy person, and of course, as a quick aside, this is a whole big story of its own. One of the most prominent high schools in the United States. It's in Palo Alto. It's where a lot of the richest people in the country, the most influential people, the people whose apps you use all day long, send their kids. It's, the, it's called the su high school suicide capital of the United States. It's been going on for 20 years. Those kids are so pressured to what? 
make an app by their 19. For what? So that the app can make the rest of our lives worse and they can make money? Well, so the mental illness of San Francisco, the mental illness of California, trust me, you see it amongst the people on the street. And am I mean to them? Sometimes. I paid 3500 they smoke meth in front of my fucking apartment, that's great. We all have to have personal responsibility. I hold people responsible, but like the rich people, the powerful people, they're mentally ill too. They're indulging in the same things. They have more power to amplify their disturbed thoughts. And that's what should disturb you. Bob Lee was killed, not a crazy homeless person or a black gang member or an illegal immigrant or someone in meth psychosis. It was killed by one of his compatriots. This system is going to be overthrown, and it's going to mean a lot of white people risking a lot of things.